for encouraging me to come here. I thank you for being with us. And I thank you for being a very, very good father, David. Ladies and gentlemen, Travel and tourism today is a fascinating central global phenomenon. It is a trillion dollar sector. In 2013, the direct, the direct exports from tourism reached an all-time record of 1.4 trillion US dollars according to our data that was closed in April of 2014. It is creating one out of 11 jobs all over the world representing 9% of the world GDP. It brings people together. It brings bridges and opportunities for businesses, cultural exchange. It makes the world a better place without doubt. I was listening a few months ago to a presentation by a Spanish journalist that was a war journalist. It was a very exciting and interesting presentation. At the end of his presentation, he said a word that I always remember and it stuck into my mind. He said, I travel, therefore, I am a better person. Indeed, there is so much of a story and a much bigger story of tourism behind the numbers and the present records that me and David keep talking about over the years. It is about people of the globe coming together, building investment, generating millions of jobs, transforming people's lives, and building peace and stability. You can never, ever hope feelings of animosity or resentment. People that you visited would eat their food, drink their drink, <coughs> sang their songs, engage and interact with them. It's a fascinating, fascinating industry. And the meeting industry today is a central part of this phenomenon. A large percentage of the travel and tourism industry is from the meeting industry. And a great, great contribution to the economic and social development of the world. Yet more important than these numbers, and particularly in the meeting industry, is the impact of the meetings industry on the ground. The enormous exchange that it represents to destinations. The fact that meetings industry today is a fundamental source of knowledge and of exposure to many nations that are yearning for that. The world is not even at a very third place still, although every day, and I stand by what I say, it is becoming a better place for all of us and for our future generations. Yet, knowledge is spread through your industry in a more fair and more even way. Exposure, being in the spotlight and upstaging some of the emerging destinations is coming to our your industry. And many, many good things are happening beyond the direct economic benefit. And that's precisely why we're absolutely thrilled and happy to have you end up with your here today. And I can assure you of our commitment rate to work with you side by side to make this show one of our pillars as we go along. The progress of the meeting industry is the progress of the travel and tourism industry. The progress of the travel and tourism industry is the progress of economies and societies. And that's exactly why it is at the heart of our mission of the United Nations. I must tell you, 10 years ago, when UNWTO became a specialized agency of the UN, and in the first meeting of what is called the UN, the CEB, the Chief Executive Board of the UN, which is the 14 heads of the UN specialized agencies, and I was looking in the eyes of my colleagues when I first attended the first meeting, and they were looking at me, politely not saying it, and practically saying it, what is he doing amongst us? This is the UN, what is travel and tourism have to do with this? Today, their view has changed, their perspective has changed, Travel and tourism is development, the meeting industry is development, and it is there for the good of everybody. Let me talk a little bit more about this travel and tourism industry before I go into the very main thrust of my presentation. This is not only an economic sector. It is one of the most resilient industries that humankind has ever seen, despite of all the lingering and the challenging economic times that we're passing through. Even beyond all our expectations, last year, 2013, witnessed the growth of the travel and tourism industry of 5%. 52 new million international travelers cross borders in one year, making the number, and mark this, 
one billion and eighty-seven million international travelers crossing the borders in one year. That's in addition to about six billion is our estimate of domestic travel within international boundaries, generating direct. This good news is here to stay. Our forecast for next year is 4 to 4.5% over and above 2014 to reach up to 1.8 billion international travelers by 2013. <laughs> this sector has come a long way, and that's why these numbers would mean more if you know that in 1950, it was only 22 million. From 22 million, we went up to 1,000. We have even evidence in front of you to prove that in 1950, 75% of the people of the world never traveled to anywhere beyond 100 kilometer radius. <coughs> they would be born, they would spend their life, and they would die within that circle. Today, anywhere in the world is open. I challenge everybody, just open the map of the world, put your finger anywhere, it will take you there. 24 hours, 56 hours. You will be there, and you will be received by a smiling face. You'll find a cafe, you'll find a little hotel, you'll find a tour guide, you'll find somebody that says, Welcome to our destination, whatever that destination is. That's why it's absolutely important to put in right perspective where we were and where we came from, and to realize and recognize the power of this industry that we are working in today. This industry today, and this human activity called travel and tourism, has moved being an elitist activity that was the domain of Europe only, or something that would go into the memoirs of a very fine British gentleman that's traveling somewhere in public around the world and writing his memoirs into a complete people's movement. One out of seven of the people of the world makes international trips every year around this world. It's beyond, it's gone beyond becoming a human need even into entering the realm of becoming right to relax, the right to be excited, the right to learn, the right to seek some help, some education, the right to do business, the right to move around the world. For thousands of years, it was good that traveled, capital traveled, that's what created, ideas traveled, information traveled. Today is the age of people traveling. 20, 30, 40 years from now, the future generations will look back at this time Say this was the age of travel, and this is the age of travel. In this process of globalization, it has its roots behind these numbers. There are forces which are simply a result of globalization, but other forces that are the very drivers of globalization. Travel and tourism is one of those drivers. Technology is one of those drivers. Creative industry is one of those drivers. We belong to a new wave of service sector. Making our aspiration, our dreams, our desires very simple. At the tip of your finger, you know how many people are in the Maidan in Kiev, or how many people and what they are saying, what they are doing in the streets of Bangkok, or in Cairo, or anywhere around the world. Our dreams are becoming similar, our aspirations are becoming similar, but those very forces also are separating our differences and our diversity. And bringing to light what is special about us. And it's travel and tourism that celebrates its diversity and makes it a economic value, something that brings better life to people in this world. I would even dare to say that this world today is governed by two kinds of revolutions that are created around the movement of the revolution subject. One is the IT revolution which is centered around the movement of information. And you can very easily prove that this gadget here controls our life, controls our world, communicates with each other, share ideas, do business, do whatever you want to do. It's incredible. Not only 10 years ago or seven years ago, but it's five years ago, what we do is unimaginable. But the second revolution, I may say, that is passing under our eyes without us recognizing it, is the 
type of revolution. It's the movement of the dead. With one billion people crossing borders every year, that is indeed a revolution. And it is only the beginning. People are going to continue to travel, to continue to enjoy this world. And we should embrace that world and not be scared of it. You can even see the proof of that when people suddenly wake up to a volcanic eruption in Iceland, and suddenly, entire world map stops from moving around for three or four days. We panic. Our world changes. Or if some political disturbances shut down the airport in Thailand like what happened three four years ago, there's a panic. We only feel the value of things when we move. But ladies and gentlemen, these beautiful forces are not existing world without very serious challenges. Because the forces and the trends in travel and tourism have been changing very quickly and very rapidly. Let me just very quickly review with you four major changes in the trends. One, there is a geopolitical shift that is following the geopolitical centers of gravity of the world that is moving east and moving south. And tourism is taking part in that and being affected by that. I came this morning hours ago from the Philippines and I was attending the meeting of the ASEAN ministers and the ASEAN country responsible for tourism. The world is moving in an incredible way in that part of the world. So is it in many, many other parts of the world that 15, 20 years ago we wouldn't have even noticed. Two, the traveler himself is changing. Travelers of today are more demanding, more intelligent, more educated. They are driving our this is not anymore a business-driven industry, it's a consumer-driven industry. Three, technology is changing the face of this industry. Today, not only business is done through technological manner, and the consumer and the service provider are in direct contact with one out of three of the people of the world through their business, travel business arrangements over the internet. That is going to is also affecting the way we rate our industries, the way we rate our services, and the way our businesses can move forward. It's changing the entire market. Fourth, last but not least, the world is becoming more conscious about a very important issue, which is our responsibility towards people and planet, the sustainability of this planet. And our businesses are going to be judged on that criteria as we move along more. These are changes that I hope you keep in mind and I will be hoping, I hope I will be elaborating more of them in this afternoon's meeting with you and many of the leaders of the politic, politi political leaders, politici politicians in the meeting and I was trying to come to terms with that term because I wasn't very familiar with it. But I'm looking forward to engage with many of the discussions that are taking place this afternoon. But in order to do all of this, we're also faced with a very serious challenge. Let me name five main challenges 